In this video, I'm going to show you guys how I do wide field imaging with this little OTA right here and my smartphone, how they connect all the gear I use and exactly how I image M31. I'm excited. This is the start of a new series for you guys doing wide field imaging with this 70 millimeter refractor. Now what gear am I using and how am I imaging? I'm going to show you guys how I do that next. Let's get started. I'm inside my work garage here because it is cold outside and I've got everything set up in here. It's just so much easier to show you guys everything that I'm using. I got the heater on and I've been really wanting to finish up this video so I decided to redo everything and do it inside here because I just couldn't get outside. Uh, all my areas that I usually use are covered in snow and it's just a pain in the butt to pack everything up and go there when I can do it right here inside and stay warm. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna show you guys my exact setup here, how I connect to my smartphone and all the gear that I'm using. You're gonna see my exact setup and some of the images that I got throughout the past few months imaging M31. That's what we're doing. So let's get going. I'm gonna show you guys here what I've got. And let me tell you guys about this awesome SV Boney SV50370 ED doublet refractor. Uh, this is a great little OTA. And like I told you guys before, SV Boney was kind enough to send this over to me last year, I believe it was. Um, they wanted to see what I could do with their most popular refractor and my smartphone. They really liked what I was doing in smartphone Astro. And they sent this over to me so that I could do some reviews and show you guys what's possible using this refractor and your smartphone because if you know that's what I do smartphone astro all right let me tell you a little bit about it real quick now you've got uh, the bracket here uh, these are adjustable you can unscrew these really easy with your fingers now the one thing I wish they did do uh, is change this uh, bracket the saddle bracket here I wish they made it a little longer because you can see it um, I've got it moved forward in the saddle but that's for weight balancing but uh, a little bit longer something uh, maybe a little bit longer would be really nice um, next they've got this dual speed focuser you got a course adjustment here which is really nice to get in and out where you want quickly and then your fine tune here this one will fine tune your focus very nicely now I've got an Orion red dot finder on here this is one of the finders that I like um, you get a bracket this comes with the OTA just mount this right in the bracket uh, I like these red dot finders really easy uh, and this one is uh, the easy finder 2 deluxe very hard to find because Orion doesn't make them anymore so if you can get one these are awesome uh, now also you'll see here um, I've also got now a diagonal and an eyepiece in here um, and let's go into those real quick now I've been using Teleview eyepiece plosols for quite some time now I really love them I've sold just about everything else I've got and that's all I'm using are these plosol eyepieces um, and what I've got in there as far as diagonal wise is I've got their diagonal their inch and a quarter Teleview Everbright their Everbright dielectric this is an awesome diagonal um, super crisp and bright views and I really am glad I picked this up this is all I'm really using right now uh, along with their eyepieces the plosols and this is a 32 uh, millimeter uh, Teleview plosol eyepiece this thing is awesome a four lens design it has four uh, elements inside and for the price man if you're looking for good plosols with good quality you cannot beat these things um, these are awesome now this is a 32 I wish I had the 40 uh, the field of view is just a slightly bit bigger with the 40 of course um, and, and apparent field of view I think there's 50 degrees with these so you know not the most narrow like a lot of plosols which are 42 um, around that range you get a 50 in here so it's a little bit uh, bigger wider than uh, most of the plosols but uh, these things are awesome well made well designed everything Teleview is awesome highly recommend it so okay all right um, now that is the OTA you've seen the mount you've seen the bar upgrades and now what you don't normally see would be the filters that I use and let me show you guys those real quick now down here, I've got two filters. 
uh, that I normally use. And let me show you the first one here. Now this is not an SV Boney, but this is uh, an Optolong, uh, Optolong L Pro filter. And I use these uh, because if the moon, you know, I have moon out uh, and I'm getting a little bit of interference, and I wanna get that data, I'll pop this in. Now it's not really made to help with the moonlight, uh, more of light pollution from the city. But um, I live in three distinct Bortle grade um, uh, skies. I've got a Bortle 6 off to my uh, kind of east here. And then directly above me, I've got a 5. And uh, over to the west here, I've got a 4. So three distinct uh, Bortle gradients in my sky. And it can be challenging. And then on top of that, I've got a golf course range just over here. Uh, over here just off to my house luckily it's not pointing at my house but those brights are, are, are those lights are bright at night man let me tell you it's it's ridiculous so this is one of the filters i use um depending on the conditions and now also i use this one this is the uh sv boney filter and you can see here this is sv boney this is their uvir cut filter and I do use this one uh, as kind of a luminance filter. This is a good broadband filter if you want to cut out all the bad light and only get the visible light. And as a Galaxy imager, that's what I want. I want visible light, the broadband light in, and any bad light out. Uh, so I often use this one uh, regularly with uh, galaxies just about every time. Uh, but it depends on the moon phase and the Bortle gradient that I'm imaging in, uh, which direction. So using those filters is very helpful uh, for astro imaging. Even with smartphone astro guys, these things are very helpful. Now, last thing I wanna show you, super important, is this guy right here, a batten off mask. Uh, this thing is gonna save you focus wise. And I had this one custom made on a guy from eBay makes these, and this was really cheap, maybe about 15 bucks, totally worth it. Uh, solid ABS plastic and uh, I know I did add a piece of tape in there just for a snug fit so it doesn't come off but it just goes on like that and boom you have a focusing mask it's perfect um, super easy at any angle it does not come off and it just fits right on there really nice and man this is gonna save you with these refractors because when you're trying to focus through the eyepiece and you're looking at stars and you look to there and you think you're focused, but then you go to image and you check your images and you're out of focus or in processing, you realize your stars are not perfect. This thing is gonna save you right here to get that fine focus and get your star sharp. Spend the time working on your stars if you do any kind of astrophotography whatsoever. This is important. Um, and I use the brighter stars like Sirius or Capella and I just you know look through uh, the eyepiece and I can line it up really nicely uh, and it works great so highly recommended make sure you always use one of these uh, and you definitely get one all right guys so this is the setup now one of the next thing I'm going to show you is my smartphone adapter and just what I'm using for that and one of the apps that I use for for imaging so let's get going I'm gonna get that set up and I'll show you guys that Okay, here is my smartphone adapter, and as you can see, this is the Celestron. It's upside down, but it is the Celestron NexYZ smartphone three-way adjustable adapter, and this is what I am using for uh, putting my smartphone in and doing all my smartphone astro, and as you can see, it's pretty big. It's solid uh, plastic. Uh, I wish it was aluminum, but um, it's been working great for me and I've got my phone in here as you can see um, and what's nice about this it's three-way adjustable and here you have an adjustable alignment move your phone in and out to the eyepiece this is extremely important which a lot of adapters don't have and then underneath here you have uh, two different adapters and one of them moves the phone this left and right and the other one moves the phone forward and back so you can get that alignment just right. Uh, now, what I'm using for imaging is the Deep Sky Camera app. 
This thing is awesome. This has been my go-to app for all my imaging and it's really helpful. You've got this viewfinder which helps you get your phone aligned in the dark. Really nice, really easy to use. Uh, I love this app. Uh, I also did a preview video on this. If you haven't seen it, go back and look at my videos and check it out and I explain a little bit more about it. But I'm using the Galaxy S10 Plus uh, and that's what I've been using. And you can see it fits really nicely in here. Uh, it's spring loaded, so the spring piece right here uh, has spring on the back of it and it keeps your phone nicely secured. And you've got a base down here at the bottom, so it butts up against that really nice. Um, very easy, uh, not too expensive, and uh, definitely worth it. Uh, now, some people hate it, some people love it. Now, I did do a couple mods to mine. I, I added in some sticky tape here on the clamp, uh, right here on the top, which they didn't have in there. You can probably see it. And I did add a couple washers in um, here as well, which helps offset the weight of the phone, because a lot of times you'll get a little bit sagged this way and it won't line up to the eyepiece here. So I added that in there. Now, one thing I do recommend is not use a phone case because it adds so much extra weight and that's gonna give you a lot more sag. You can see I've got my phone case pulled off here, which um, just be careful, don't drop your phone on the pavement or wherever. Um, but yeah, definitely, this is awesome. This is what I'm using. So that is my setup, guys. Now, I hope uh, this was helpful to show you what I'm using for this wide field imaging. Uh, and this is gonna start the series off here with this particular OTA, this SV Boney SV50370 ED doublet refractor. This is an Acromat. Um, now there is some chromatic aberration that I've noticed with here, but if you get your stars nice and sharp, you won't really have to worry about that too much. Um, and uh, definitely there is a reducer that comes along you can put on here, but I don't recommend using it because back focus is a pain in the butt. Uh, to do with it. So just use it as it is. Now you don't have to have this setup guys that I do. If you have anything that has a uh, go-to and tracking, this is a very light OTA and it will pretty much work on any mount. And, uh, but definitely, you know, ah, I didn't show you guys. I've got uh, SV Boney's. Um, this is their do strip. SV Boney, this is their do strap. And this thing is a lifesaver. Let me tell you, in the winter time, uh, I've got this connected here. Sorry, guys, I didn't talk to you about that. But yeah, this is connected here, and it comes down. They have a controller, and you can see on, and you've got uh, low, middle, and high. Now, one thing you do have to get separately is this power cord, which connects to your battery pack. And this is just a simple plug. As you can see, you can pick these up anywhere. Um, these are really cheap and it just connects in just like that. Super easy to do. And yeah, this is a lifesaver. Definitely get one if you're doing any imaging at night because you will have Frosty the Snow Scope and that lens in there will be crystal and you won't be able to see anything. So okay, all right guys, well, this is what I'm using here and that's my setup. So next I'm gonna show you guys a little bit on some of the imaging uh, and the images I've taken and then into the processing. All right, well, the rig is running right next to me here. It's about 9 p.m. and it is super cold out. My hands are like icicles right now, but the SV Boney 70E doublet is in action. I got my Galaxy S10 Plus imaging using the Deep Sky Camera app. Everything is going great. I'm in this wonderful field here where I like to do my galaxy imaging. It is super dark. I do have the city around me with some city glow, but Andromeda is straight up right now. So it's in a really nice dark area of the sky and it is going towards the west. So it's going to be perfect from here out. I'm hopefully going to get a bunch of data tonight to create that really nice image. We'll see. It's taken a lot of effort trying to maintain that focus and get an accurate focus with this 70. It's so hard to see using the batten off mask. I've had to really work hard at that, but I think I got a decent focus going, so I'm letting the rig run. It is absolutely beautiful. I got Mars right here, uh, Orion Nebula right there. 
and M31 straight up. This is perfect conditions for doing this. So I'm going to let the rig run and get more data. Hopefully jump in the car here and try to get warm. All right, it is processing time. I've got Photoshop open here. and I'm just going to guide you, uh, guide you all through just some of the steps that I used here to get the final image and tell you exactly what those steps are. I'm not going to show you exactly how to do each and every one of them. For the time sake of this video, I'm trying to keep it short. So I'll just kind of quickly go over this with you guys. Now, here is my finished stack out of Deep Sky Stacker. This was the saved image. This was not the auto save. This was the saved image, so it's much darker, as you can see on your screen. And basically, this is the, the eyepiece here. Now, what you're going to want to do is want to crop, and I've already done that over here. And you can see here is the cropped image, and I gave myself enough room when I cropped so I have Andromeda in here, the entire field of view, and I'm not cutting any of the edges out of that. All right, so from here, basically, let me show you just a little bit about what I did. Now, the first step that I did was a little bit of stretching, and you can see this is an arc sign uh, 100 stretch. Uh, then I did a gradient uh, removal, and I leveled it out a little bit. <clears throat> now, the next thing that I did here was I did a uh, selective curve to try to bring out the galaxy a little bit more and not so much the background. And then I did some noise uh, exterminator on that to try to clear that up. Uh, now the next thing I did was a little uh, saturation. I wanted to see what kind of colors I was dealing with uh, and I really saturated it heavily. Now this is something you probably don't want to do but I did it just for the sake of trying to see what colors I had here and then I did some uh, stars smaller and I did some targeting curves to try to bring out this galaxy a little bit more and I'm not stretching the background so much and then after that I did HLVG trying to get rid of some of that green cast that I've got going through here um, and then also I did another gradient uh, removal to try to get rid of some of that gradient around here um, and then after that I did a high pass filter and tried to bring out some of the dust lanes inside here and that's what you're seeing then I did uh, some targeting brightness I wanted to target the galaxy itself and try to make it a little bit brighter so I did a couple of those here to try to target the galaxy without stretching I didn't want to overstretch things and introduce a ton of noise so this is a simple trick you can do if you just target areas of the galaxy you can um, brighten them up without overstretching them and introducing a lot of noise all right Next, uh, let's see, I worked on the background a little bit and really tried to darken the background a little bit. Um, and that's what you're seeing there. And then I worked on the core a little bit here and tried to change the saturation levels and try to make it really smooth. And then you can see I did a little bit more core work here uh, on the hues of the core. And then I targeted the galaxy itself, some of the edges on the outside here. Uh, with some hue saturation and then from there uh, you know obviously I stretched the stars a little bit so I wanted to make those a little bit smaller and by doing that you can see what happens it really makes the galaxy pop a little bit more and then I went ahead and did a little bit more uh, noise exterminator to try to smooth and everything out uh, and then a little bit of clarity to try to make the galaxy pop a little bit more and then this was my first Finch image. This is what I posted originally on social media. Um, and I really wasn't happy with it. And I realized a little trick that I could do to try to uh, bring some of that color back because it seemed like I was missing a lot of the original color in here. So I went ahead and did a trick. Now this is uh, something that it, it you might not want to try because you can get it out of hand real quick. I added in an oxygen three layer uh, and you could see it turned green oxygen and then I added in an HA layer a hydrogen alpha layer and you could see um, now I blended these together 